2023 is just around the corner. So naturally, we're thinking what's going to be big in the world of digital marketing next year. We talk about that and a whole lot more in this episode of Inbound Buzz. Welcome to the Inbound Buzz Podcast, your weekly jolt of all things digital and inbound marketing. Brought to you by redpandas.com.au. Now for your host and co-founder of Red Pandas, Moby Sadiq. Welcome to the Inbound Buds Podcast, episode 129. My name is Tony Cow, and I'm joined by Moby Sadiq. How are you going today, Mobs? Good, man. I think second last episode of the year. So next time, or actually we'll do one more. And after that, the year's done, man. Yeah. Mobs got like another gift for me today. Um, last time he got me the Art of uh, War and today he's giving me a BJJ uh, dummy. So yeah, I'm very impressed. Thanks, Mobs. So if you don't know what that is, uh, you have to be very careful how you say that. It's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Yeah. And in my car sitting next to me at the moment is this life-size dummy, which turned a lot of heads on the street. But I'm, yeah, I'm giving it to Tony because <laughs> he injured himself. But anyway, let's get into it. So, news buzz. What's our first piece of news today, Tony? LinkedIn new focus inbox surfaces more relevant messages. So, it's funny. Um, LinkedIn at the moment has got this new uh, focus inbox where it helps to filter important messages from, you know, all the other spam. And it's funny because I was speaking to you this week, Mobs, and I was like, man, LinkedIn's like just a recruitment platform and I, I don't like it and I didn't like the inbox, but they're fixing that. So, you know, it's good to know. Yeah, look, I mean, look, I, LinkedIn is my most, for me personally, it's, a ne- it's the network I use the most. Okay. So, I am posting three to five uh, times per week and, you know, we're just talking about some of the business and some of the leads we've gotten from there. So, mm-hmm. I think it's really powerful as a content creator, like putting stuff out there, things you're interested in, things where you can add value and relatability. Like I always talk about being on LinkedIn is not about trying to be an expert. It's about showing relatability. Mm. And like literally I'll have conversations with the team and then the next day I'm putting that insight onto LinkedIn, I'm sharing my experiences. Now, I will agree with you that Inbox sucks ass. It is so bad. Like the only thing I get on the inbox and like, you know, I'm CEO of Red Pandas. I get job offers mm. for other oh, you, agencies. Oh, you do? Yeah, because they don't even look, right? They just like <laughs> spam you, right? So it's, it, it's no fun for recruiters. And I get people trying to buy me coffee all the time. Nice. Trying to sell me shit, right? <laughs> coffee, and I've said this before, coffee's not expensive. I don't need that, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just like a, a dumping ground. So I, I think LinkedIn itself, like the organic component of LinkedIn is so powerful. And that's where I would tell brands, businesses, professionals to spend their time. And we spoke, we won't talk about too much about this. We've got such a big topic today, but you know, on the ad side, Tony, like clients are always telling us, oh, can I run LinkedIn ads? Because naturally I can target a title. And we say like, guys, it depends on what you're going to push. If you're mm. just going to do your direct response ads, it's not going to work. Mm. You have to offer something of value that's going to help that person win their day in their role. Mm. So, you know, I've got to, I can't say too much about LinkedIn because LinkedIn pays me to do posts on TikTok. So nice. I'm not going to trash them until at least the agreement is over. Okay. I'm kidding. I'm All kidding. Good. I love you, LinkedIn. But, um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's my take on that. Okay. Elon Musk shares vision for Twitter 2.0. So, you know, there was this big buzz about Elon Musk going to mess up Twitter. And, you know, we're having a good laugh about that because it's not true. Come on, like Elon Musk. <laughs> I got so much hate on TikTok about this. People called me a, um, a D-word writer. <laughs> um, you know, they said a lot of bad things. And all I said was, God, this guy knows how to run businesses. But I know, anyway, that aside, it's, this is interesting. So, Elon Musk wants to turn Twitter into like, and what, everything app. Yeah, what's the Chinese TikTok? Dai, Dai Yung? Uh, Honestly, I don't know. Man, you're Chinese, dude. Like, come on, man. Like, I don't follow <laughs> Chinese you know, culture. If you want to go to a Chinese restaurant, if you want any Chinese advice about culture, do not ask Tony. Like, he's like the worst guy to ask, right? <laughs> come on, man. You know, anyway. So, we didn't just hire you for the diversity tip, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. I t- know Tasha would love that one. Yeah. So, no. So, um, okay. Whatever it's called, Dai Yong or whatever. It's g- great. It's a very professional podcast yeah. today. Um, you can do everything there. Right? Okay. You can like sell stuff. You can have a shop there. Yeah. It's like their WhatsApp, but you can do everything. Take payments, fill out like, you know, application for a passport. Like you can do so much there. Yeah. I'm educating you yeah. about your yeah. Chinese bet. apps, right? <laughs> um, you can do so much there. So, I think this is really, really interesting. Like, so for us as marketers, you know, I mean, Twitter traditionally 
has been like real time events, something that's temporal, seasonal. Mm. So there hasn't been a lot of applicability for our clients. But I would say watch this space because mm. Elon is turning this into something that it's not currently, mm. and he's got the money, power, and you know willpower to do it. So, like specifically, this everything app uh, concept is to have more long form tweets, so people can tweet you know long of you know like more words. Yeah. But encrypted DMs, so you know that's interesting. Your know, privacy in America and the world. Um, users to use payment, like you said, those features. But specifically, this is what I love. Um, advertising. They want to start, you know, allowing video advertising, better entertainment. So I think that's interesting. That'll be good. There's a lot, you know, that will grow and hopefully we can get onto that. But also, uh, lucky last, redo their search bar. They want to improve their um, search power. So yeah, I wonder what's that about later. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, I, I like this uh, next buzz. Why Google search is getting worse. And there's this debate lately, you know, with people, you know, using Google saying people um, reckon Google search is getting worse. And there's this ex-Google employee that says, um, that wanted to counter it. And she said, no, the web is getting worse. And what that means is, um, you know, because what's happening lately, um, is, you know, we're searching for stuff and we're not getting the results we want on Google sometimes, right? But I think it's due to the amount of bad content out there. And, you know, the regulations mm -hmm. on the internet. I think, honestly, I think um, yes and no. There's a lot of crap out there in the world, on the internet world. But also, I think Google does do its job pretty well. So, you're talking about this Marisa Mayer woman, the ex-Googler, talking yeah. about it's not that Google search is getting worse. The world is getting worse. Like, isn't that a little bit of a cop-out though, Tony? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's not me, it's you type of thing. I think, I think part of it is that our expectations of search are changed now, mm. right? We're talking about this before, like, you know, my wife wanted to figure out how to clean the fan blades without getting the dust on us. So mm. she went on TikTok and she realized you use the pillowcase. And yeah. That's the way to do it. Um, if I'm searching for stuff on work, I'm searching on YouTube, right? If I'm searching for some content, I'm searching on Google. And even Google's trying to get more dynamic and that's why you see shorts and long form, short form in your results now. Mm. But people are getting annoyed that some for some queries, it feels like you get a lot of ads and yeah. just, the quality isn't there. So I think it's just, sure, maybe the, the web is getting worse, but our expectations of how to search and where to search are changing now. That's true. We don't natively, and this is really interesting, Tony, like who would have thought that Google isn't now the only place where we go yeah, for search? Like, and if you're younger, it's even different. Mm. You're using TikTok a lot more. So... Yeah. And one of the searches, um, they said, my search results just don't seem as useful. And I want to counter that by, back by saying, like, what we've been preaching about, Mopes, it's like, you got to produce better content with your business. You know what I mean? you got to get better quality content that's engaging and it's useful, it's, um, you know, educational. Because, you know, if you don't get that right, people are not going to be going to your website, you're not going to rank, you know, so it's important to get that good content out there, right? 100%. Okay, and uh, moving on, lucky last, YouTube shares top creator clips and ads. So this is interesting. Um, looking at the top um, you know, 2022 um, you know, YouTube channels and ads, we can see that there was a whole list and Mr. Beast, you know, that guy, he is dominating the YouTube world. He absolutely just, you know, does fantastic content, challenging content. I, I, I've seen it. It's interesting, but I don't have time to watch it. <laughs> like, I mean, he leads with content. You know, his whole thing is like, let me spend $10 million to create this house made of jelly and whatever because he knows he's going to be able to build his brand. Like, he's the metaphor of someone who's doubled down on content so much mm. because he knows that attention is currency. Mm. And, you know, that's why all these, you know, like it used to be, hey, just these influencers doing brand deals, but they're starting businesses now. He's got Beast Bar. He's got his burger business. Beast Burgers, yeah. Beast Burgers, you know. So, like, it, it's quite clever. Now, I'm not saying we should all do that type of stuff, but recognizing attention is currency is definitely a lesson here. Mm. That's for sure. I mean, what, what, what was interesting, though, in that same article you shared with me, Tony, it has, like, the brands, right? So, Mr. Beast is far, far ways away, but then he had some brands that had like as the, the top global ads came from Amazon, number one, Telecom Egypt, Egypt, Clash of Can uh, Clans, and I hate getting those bloody 
gaming yeah, <laughs> ads, yeah. Apple, so on and so forth. Netflix is there, Squarespace is there as well. So th- these ads are done in a high production, high quality way. And the other other key thing, which we're going to talk about later, Tony, I know you're a big fan of these, is they use a lot of creative. Yeah. So that, you know. And, and there were specifically... Uh, paid ads you know on youtube and they will come like very super bowl styles that let's be honest they're fortune 500 companies they got big budgets to blow and spend and get celebrity led you know like you know videos 95 or even so 98 percent of the world in businesses don't actually have that budget so they can't throw money against the wall yeah, yeah so all those ad tv ad dollars have gone there yeah okay and that wraps it up for news uh news buzz um for episode one two nine moving on next section featured buzz digital marketing trends for 2023 now this gets me excited so i have to start with snackable media becoming mainstream i gotta start with that anyone who's listened to more than two episodes knows that i talk about a lot about tiktok and it's not necessarily that i'm impressed with tiktok because it doesn't matter like tiktok will be you know who knows if it's going to be around in five six years it doesn't matter the point is they are such a good representation of what social media is now So the macro shift, Tony, has been we've moved from the social graph to the interest graph. What does that mean, Mobes? So the social graph was it was more about the people you're connected with, your friends, your family, who you're socially connected with. Okay. The interest graph is about what you're interested with, Mm. what you resonate with, you know, content that is interesting to you, peer groups, clubs, societies, topics, that type of thing. So, for example, like with my TikTok, I didn't, I didn't realize this, what I was doing, but I was actually focusing on the interest graph. I was just focusing on digital marketing news, tips, tricks, mm. anyone who's interested in that space. And mm. that's why TikTok works so well. And it's great for brand new creators. People think they, it's, it's too late for them to catch up because the interest graph where it's at, if you can find an interest in a niche and do that better than everyone else, the interest graph is going to reward you. Now, again, I don't give a damn about TikTok, but everyone is falling in line. YouTube Shorts as well. Mm -hmm. And a few episodes ago, we spoke about the fact that YouTube Shorts is going to be monetizing, has a monetization uh, plan where they give creators a big chunk of that money back. Yeah, amazing. Now, why do we care? If you're a creator, great. Interesting, you need to be onto that platform. But as a brand, the attention goes where, we said attention is currency, it goes where the creators are, right? The, The creators who actually have that affinity with that interest graph. So it, if it's not important today, it's going to be a lot more important moving into future. So snackable media going mainstream, that's number one on my list. And the fact that we can use TikTok as a search engine now, uh, LinkedIn as a micro blogging platform, mm. it's really important. So th- there's so many ways of just producing content, right? Shouldn't it be no excuse and stuff. It's, so, it's pretty easy now as well. You know, they've given us the platforms. Social media, what about social media uh, moves? I mean, outside of that, I think the... The, the last thing I'll say about social media is that's where brands are being built. So if you want to build a brand, you know, what did we used to do to build brands? A lot of above the line media, TV ads, radio, whatever. Like there was, you know, especially bigger brands and even smaller brands will allocate some a budget to mm. media or sorry, brand building. Social media is where it's at. Like in 2023, 2024, that's where you go to build a brand. Mm. And getting, again, attention is currency, getting people who are actually fans of what you do via the interest graph and mush, pushing them over to platforms where you can actually market to them, either remarketing or through mm. email marketing or to your database, it's going to be really, really key. But um, I think really, and this kind of ties to what I want you to talk about in the next one, Tony, is creative. So like creative is definitely more important on social media as it used to be, but mm. I think that's a good segue to paid media. Absolutely. And we were speaking about this and you made a good point about uh, Gary V. What did he say? Brand, too long brands were mailing the ads? For too long, brands have been mailing it in in terms of the creative. Now, I have to sort of, for the benefit of everyone, you know, give a disclaimer because he didn't on this keynote that I watched. But Gary V gets a lot of revenue from creating creative. Right. Yeah. So, of course, he's going to say this, but he has a point. What he's essentially saying is too long. We focus the lion's share of our budget on the media spend. So Google, Facebook and now TikTok, you know, LinkedIn and just a little bit on the creative. We were mailing it in. We weren't really paying a lot mm. of attention, but he's saying there should be a lot more split on creating. Now, he's extreme. Right. And it's, again, better for him because he gets more revenue. Yeah. Right. Because his, his agency will do this. He talks about having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different 
creatives for every single medium and niche and oh, wow. and age group and split testing that and and he's got a point but i guess if there's a point that's a bit more realistic is creative right and yeah. that's definitely something that you've been saying to me for, for a long time now 100 percent, because the era of privacy is here to stay i believe it's you know we we got it we can't fight it we've got to deal with it so our data's gone now our yeah. data's gone the irs you know packed from the algorithms everything's not as trackable as you know 2019 we're not here anymore for 2019 where it was so easy to just load up an ad and get results now we actually have to try and marketing for all those lazy marketers out there <laughs> yeah they, they gotta do the work now <laughs> they gotta do the work and that means getting better at marketing you know copywriting your creatives your designs your video everything together to present a message and that's what you know like good marketers do too long people would jump on google uh, google facebook ads and just let the machines do the work no nah, it's not going to happen anymore you know you got to put effort into your creatives you got to get good at it you got to you got to test a lot a lot of testing because let's be honest you can see what works in the past and you can give it a go but you don't know if it's going to work 100 percent, right yeah so that's why you got to split test and do all the marketing you know stuff that we have to do and if i can give an example for smaller brands like what lots means like a couple of years ago we could get away with say one ad set for a group maybe two three ads mm. we can't do that anymore yeah because like you said tony you could let the pixel do the work and just figure it out but now you have to do like five six seven for a particular ad set and just refine it. And we're not saying you just do that every month, you keep refining and then you stop using that creative once it starts falling off. But it's certainly say double the amount of creative mm. that you needed a couple of years ago. And I'll just elaborate on that better marketing. There's frameworks you can use, like um, right now we've been working on story brands, a framework, and that helps us with our marketing, you know, and Moby's got a great uh, you know, segment on that. But you know, stuff like that we use, you know, and it helps us, it really helps us and we can see a great uh, improvement in our ads and our marketing. 100% story band. We'll link that in the show notes as well. We can watch the video version of this and anything I share on my screen at redpandas.com.au forward slash EP one two nine okay so content marketing yeah so for this one i want to rely on and i'll link this in the show notes as well uh smart insights right they, these guys man it, this takes me back like if there's one resource that i've followed since i started marketing like 18 years ago whatever it was you're not that old are you i'm 35 now oh, okay. so <laughs> thank you for that Toby. but uh but yeah like since then it has been dave's chaffee from smart insights he's got a he's got a book as well that he does a version of every single year really really smart guys so they put out a lot of data and i wanted to refer to something that he taught i spoke about as far as content goes so he said that content often isn't managed as the strategic asset that it is which requires a dedicated content marketing strategy and resource so like I could have paid him to write that. Like, that's exactly what we actually talk about. So what is essentially talking about, like, you know, content has just been like a, you know, and we see this with so many of our clients, right? And people that we're trying to actually convince that that's not the way to do it, where they'll just outsource a content writer. They'll mm. use someone from Fiverr or whatever, or the Philippines, whatever, and just get them to do some content as an add-on. It's not seen the biggest problem there. And that's mm. what Dave is talking about. It's not strategic. Mm. It's not like I would say when people say, oh, we've tried blogging, it doesn't work. Then I say, okay, what percentage of, of your content do you use in the sales process? Of all the articles mm. that you write, what percentage of those are shared in the sales process? What percentage of those do you work with the sales team to find out the questions they're being asked to actually talk about? And it's often nothing mm. or close to nothing. So, you know, it, it's like for us, obviously, it's a little bit self-serving, but that's because it works. It's a it's a win-win for everyone. We're an agency that trains people in they ask you answer. We coach them to have a content marketer and to write content that Google loves and also that, you know, users love and how to work with sales to get that. So anyway, this article goes on. He talks about the fact that four traits that leading businesses who do content to the best effect do. One, they have a documented content marketing strategy. Two, they have a measured approach to evaluating content effectiveness. So they've got dashboards. And for example, we on HubSpot, you can create a dashboard that has one column, the name of the article, and the second column, money. Like, mm. could not be more simpler. Article, money, like how much money did it make? So mm. they actually have a measurement framework. Dedicated resources for content marketing, and we would argue in-house, and generate sales and revenue with content, you know, which is what people want to do. So, and, and of course, you know, recently the helpful content, uh, mm. the helpful content 
um, algorithm update came out from Google, which yeah. reinforces that answering people's questions, which yeah. is what they ask your answer is. So in other words, have a full, in, you know, if we're talking about next year, reallocating budget, divesting budget from other areas, I'd say is have a full uh, time in-house content marketer, publish three articles per week and have them trained in the content that Google loves and that the sales team can actually use and leverage and make money from. Interesting. Um, you talk about strategic as well, Mo, because that in-house of Red Pandas, I've seen this um, come through to the culture. We do it as us. well. We, we do it. We share. We have content. We share with clients. We use it. These podcasts, you know, you've got the team into podcasting, producing content. So I really see like you're preaching what you, you're practicing what you preach. Like it's interesting. Yeah. And you see it just working so well. Um, SEO, and this relates to content, I guess, marketing. <laughs> so, I mean, I, let me ask you first, right? Like, what do you think like from an seo point of view for next year would you tell a business to if a business said to you tony um i want to invest some seo next year in 2023 what would you say depends what it is modes because it's not just back back linkings right like we've been preaching about and you know i've people keep asking is seo dead and i think that that post that you did still gone viral <laughs> yeah so that i mean you can go if you guys because i'm we, we're not going to go in depth today but episode 114 we yeah. talked literally seo is dead and like I've actually, so I think in 2023, budget is going to be continued to be moved away from SEO agencies. The SEO industry as like, if you're just doing SEO, it should be dead. Mm. It should be. It's not because a sucker is born every minute. And unfortunately, people take advantage of, and I have empathy. I'm, I'm saying that out of fun, but like I have empathy for people who just think that, okay, this is the way it needs to be done. It's always been done that way. Mm. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like trying to use a bicycle to go from, uh, Perth, which is one side of Australia, to Sydney. Wow. It's a long slog. It doesn't work. And SEO is now a byproduct of really, really good content marketing. We share plenty of examples in episode 114. That's actual objective data. So definitely check that out. But um, but yeah, I, I do think people will continue to divest content uh, money from there to go into content. But also, which brings me to the next trend, digital experience trends, right? What is this? So um, and here I'm going to share my screen. So this is definitely uh, a point where you guys can have a look on my screen. And this again is by Dave Chaffee. And he talks about interactivity. Like it's an interactivity graph. I'm show you, I'll show you this here, Tony. So essentially what it is, it's a scale of interactivity and how brands need to focus on digital experiences and interactivity on their websites. So on the far left of the scale is time and cost to create. The far right, more time, more cost to create. Mm. On the vertical axis, it's uh, content engagement and interactivity. So from low interactive, so you can imagine like, if, you know, if you're just listening to this in the car, low cost, low time, it's also going to have low engagement, low interactivity. Right. So it's, I like, I really, really love this because it's a scale because not everyone is like, you know, I don't know, Reebok shoes, you know, mm. like expensive dressmaker. They can't all invest in AR, but it's essentially a scale. And we need yeah. to like look at where we are and try to move up on that scale. So for example, the one on the bottom is static web content, least interactive, the cheapest. Then we have rich content. Now that's video. Now in 2022, 2023, people still don't have enough video on, right? <laughs> but that's towards the bottom of the scale. The next one is personalization. And that's definitely a trend that we're seeing in terms of like, once you get your website solid, what's the next thing? How do you increase your conversions? Having different experiences for different people, even different homepage, mm, like yeah. even different messages on homepage. And you can do that through some affordable technologies. HubSpot has smart content as well. Then you've got interactive experiences like, for example, an interactive customer journey and followed by AR and VR. Now, this is one of those things. Technology and trends always triple down. And recently we were talking about, this is something that's become a bit more mainstream. Tony, we were talking about, remember, Snapchat lens, right? Yeah, okay, so yeah. you could actually like Snapchat something and then buy it on Amazon. Yeah. So this is not just reserved for like Rolex watches and some of the really expensive brands anymore. Mm. So if you're a consumer brand or something where there's interactivity or product brand, you need to start thinking about how you can leverage those or at least improve the experience 100%. on your website. So that, that's what you should be focusing on. Um, in terms of that trend itself, I mean, really, the, the last thing I'll talk about is, um, you know, in terms of designs, right? There's a concept known as a design principle known as, a, known as Memphis design. And you can look it up and Google it, Memphis design. What it essentially is, it's like big, bold, in your face. I'm going to try to share my screen yet. So, I'll, I'll bring my screen back up here. So, see this, Tony? Like, right. you know, that kind of big, bold type face, flat images. Memphis design, it's like a little bit of sort of like, feels like, kind of like the 70s, like they've got right. these, you know, um, 
and I don't know the word for it, but like these shapes and images and geometry. Yeah, vectors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, vectors and things like that. So it's almost kind of going back to mater- like the Google material design uh, style. But that is, I guess, a trend that we're seeing from a design point of view. Um, but yeah, and th- that's that's yeah, probably all I'd say for digital experience trends. Okay. And lucky last, Mobes, um, I see is an expert in this area because I've seen him um, speak about it and I always learn a lot. Sales and marketing alignment. So this is the one we'll end on. I know it's a big episode, so uh, you know, hats off to anyone who's made it this far. But this is probably, the, especially if you are a, a B2B team or a B2C that has a sales team. Yep. And that's sales and marketing alignment, like you say. So you know, there's a study done by LinkedIn that shows 80% of marketers and sales uh, leaders believe that alignment between teams is essential to business growth. So 80% of marketing and sales leaders say alignment between marketing and sales is essential to growth. Great, almost 90%. The thing is 90% of them are misaligned across strategy, process, content, and culture. So almost 90% say we should do it, but only 10% of them are actually doing yeah. it, misalignment. So it's something that everyone knows and no one is doing. And the idea here really, if it, we get really tactical, is getting sales and marketing working together. I've said this before, it's not just a random meeting you put in your calendar and you discuss you know, randomly or you catch someone in the hall or say, hey, can you just talk to me about, you know, like questions people are asking you. No, no, they ha- you have to establish a revenue team where, I, you know, I had a I had a prospect today, right? Um, I didn't tell you this, Tony, but I had a prospect today and it's a sales call that actually didn't go well. Like, you know, I've had, I've had some, we've had some, you know, it's a very busy time for us. We've had some that did really well, but actually today it kind of bombed. And the point of contention was he said that marketing, he goes, I'm looking for a marketing agency and marketing is not responsible for revenue, right? That is the sales team's job. Marketing is just responsible for getting MQLs and that's it. Okay. And sales. And I said, I disagree with you because how will, say, how, will, how will marketing create content for the sales team? Hmm. Will marketing really care? Like, because then, you know, listening to this gentleman who meant really well, and I, and I empathize with this, with this hmm. lack of education there, you're always gonna have that fight. Yeah. Where salespeople are like, oh, marketing's leads are so shit. And then marketing's like, well, they don't do anything with our leads. So true. You're misaligning the whole point of having marketing. It's not about responsibility for sales. That's still sales responsibility. The marketing needs to have a seat on the revenue table. They need to be across what's actually happening. Mm. The reason why we overinvest in marketing is because we know how important it is to the bottom line. Mm. So getting those teams working together. External facilitation is really, really important because you can't be a profit in your own town. Yeah. Getting those teams working together, getting you geared up to do that and then doing it yourself because you need to build that culture and muscle yourself is highly important and something that we offer and we're offering it because of the trend Mm -hmm. because we see that businesses just struggle. They they can't be profits in their own town, right? You know, whatever biblical, whether you see them as as, uh, fantasy stories or you actually believe them, you know, the prophets were always kicked out of their towns because they were from there. Yeah, true. So sometimes they need external, you know, facilitation. But that's essentially it. We spoke about content, social, SEO, digital experience trends, sales marketing alignment. If you get even half of these right, and like Antonio, you said something before, you know, getting your story brand right, the story, the, the story behind your brand and, you know, getting cut through with your messaging, you're going to be better than 90% of the businesses out there. Fantastic. As we wrap it up, if you want to watch this episode, go to redpandas.com.au forward slash EP129. See ya. See you guys. Thanks for listening to Inbound Buzz. Learn anything? Return the favor by spreading the word. Want to make your mark in digital? Need help with your digital strategy, inbound, and marketing automation efforts? Then visit redpandas.com.au and be sure to tune in next time for another Inbound Buzz hit.